Shweta Shah. I am your institutor for the subject Computer Organization and Architecture. In this subject, we have started Unit 2, that is Basic Computer Organization and Design. In this unit, we are going to see today the topic that is Intro Cycle and the Complete Computer Description. So, let me start with the first topic, that is Intro Cycle. We all are aware that interrupts are nothing but some high priority task that is required to be completed before normal execution. Okay, so uh, while you are executing the interrupt, uh, actually processor will be uh, doing some its own task. So it has to stop its own task and have to execute this interrupt. And at that time, after executing the interrupt, it has to return to its main program. So for that, it has to store its return address. Okay. So in this, we can consider that the task of the interrupt is similar to some kind of subroutine. Okay. So let me see how we can design this interrupt cycle. Uh, the way that interrupt is handled by this computer, we can explain by this figure. In this, we have used uh, one extra flip-flop R that is known as the interrupt flip-flop. If it is 0, that means you have to execute your normal instruction. If it is 1, then you have to use, uh, execute your interrupt cycle. Okay. If it is 0, then you, you have to uh, fetch and uh, decode your instruction and then execute the instruction. After executing or you can say when you are executing the instruction, then you have to check for the I and E flag. That means you have to check for the interrupt, whether there is any interrupt is generated or not. If this IE and flag is 0, that means you have disabled the interrupt. And if it is 1, that means you have enabled the interrupt. If IE and is 1, or if IE and is 1, that means you have enabled the interrupt. And if any FGI or FGO flag are 1, that means input device or output device are ready for transmission. And that will work by using this interrupt. So that it can be uh, say that next cycle will be of interrupt cycle and to indicate that you have to make R flag 1. Okay, That means if your IEM flag is 1 and FGI or FGO flag is 1 then you have to put R as a 1 to indicate that this, uh, this cycle of execution is completed. But for next cycle you have to execute some interrupt cycle. And if your R flag is 1, then you have to execute the interrupt cycle. And for this execution of interrupt cycle, you have to do some branching operation. Okay. For that, you have to change the sequence of execution. That means you have to change the content of the program counter. But after executing that sequence, you have to return to main program. And for that returning to the main program, you require to store this value of program counter at some location. Generally, here we are going to using this location 0 for storing this value. And we are going to storing this uh, subroutine for this interrupt at the location 1 or next. Okay, So here you can see that uh, the uh, location, uh, whenever you have to execute your interrupt cycle, you are going to store your program counter at location 0, then increment the program counter by 1, that means storing 1 to the program counter. Then where at that location you have stored your interrupt service routine and at that time you have to make IE and 0 and R like 0 so that you are not going to uh, providing service to the any other interrupt because you are already providing service to some one interrupt okay so by the end of this task you have to put IE and 0 and R 0 okay so this way you can use this interrupt cycle here uh, we can say that when R is 0, the computer goes through the instruction cycle. During uh, this execution phase of the instruction cycle, IE and is checked by the control. If it is 0, then it indicates that the programmer doesn't want to use this interrupt cycle. So that control continues to the next instruction cycle. If IE and 1, then the control checks for the flag wave. If it is a uh, flag bits are 0, that means that no uh, input or output device are ready for the transmission and in the case uh, control continues for the next instruction cycle and if either flag is set to 1 while IE and is 1, then the flip flop R is set to 1. Uh, at the end of the execution phase, the control checks for the value of the R and if it is value 1, then it goes to the interrupt cycle instead of the instruction cycle. So this is the basic cycle for your interrupt execution 
and this interim execution cycle is the hardware implementation of the branch and save return uh, address operation and the return address uh, available in the pc and it is stored at the specific location where we can found later when the program return to the the return address available in the pc is stored in the specific location where it can be found later when the program returns to the instruction at which it was interrupted earlier the location may be a processor register memory stack or a specific memory location but in the flow chart we have used the specific memory location z and then controls and uh, inserts the address 1 into pc and it clears i e n and r so that no more interrupt uh, can be occur until this interrupt request from this flag has been serviced Here we have put the location zero blank. At location one, we have stored the instruction D U N one one two zero that shows that we have stored our interrupt service routine at location one one two zero. And from one one two zero location onwards, we have stored this uh, interrupt service routine. And at the end of the interrupt service routine, you have to store some instruction. B U N zero with indirect addressing so that you can access your actual location where you have stopped. Uh, let me consider we are executing the instruction and at location 255 uh, we got the interrupt so that at that time your program counter's value will be like 256 so that when you execute the interrupt first you have to store the location of the program counter that is 256 at the location 0 and then you uh, the program counter's value will be incremented by 1 so that it will be 1 and at that location you have stored the instruction bun1120 so that your next execution will be start from 1120 where you have stored your interrupt service routine and at the end of the service routine you have stored the instruction bun0 so that you can indirectly go to the location 0 where you have stored your indirect address and from that location onwards you can start your execution when you return to the main program Next, we will see the register transfer statements for the interrupt cycle. The flip-flop uh, is set to one if I E N is one, either F G I or F G O are equal to one. Okay, and this happens with any clock transition except uh, when timing signals are T zero, T one, or T two are activated. Because at T zero, T one, and T two timing signal, we are uh, fetching and decoding the instruction. so accept that timing signal and your iem flag is 1 and fgo or fgi is 1 you have to uh, activate the r flag okay so that for setting the flip flop r is equals to 1 we can set it like that t0 dash t1 dash t2 dash that means your timing signal t0 t1 t2 r not that then iem is 1 and fgo or fgi is 1 so that we have used here oring operation by indicating plus sign if this condition whole condition fulfills then you have to set r as a one that means your next next cycle will be of interrupt cycle uh, next thing the fetch and decoding phase uh, must be modified to replace this uh, t0 t1 and t2 with r dash t0 r dash t1 and r dash t2 for your normal instruction execution and for your interrupt execution this will be like r t0 r t1 and r t2 and uh, the cycle statement can be given as r for r t0 you have to store the zero into address register and program counter into temporary register at t1 timing you will store this temporary register's contain that is your program counter into the memory location given by the ar that is zeroth location and program counter with zero contain then you will increment the content of program counter by 1 iem is clear to zero and r is clear to zero so that you can execute next interrupt because as you are already executing one interrupt for here and lastly you will put the sequence counter to zero so that you can execute the next instruction okay so these are the basic tasks which are required while you are executing the interrupt cycle During the first timing signal, ER is clear to one, and the content of program counter is transferred to the temporary register TR. With the second timing signal, the return address is stored into memory location zero, and PC R PC is clear to zero. And uh, next, in third timing signal, we are incrementing PC by one and clears I E N and R, 
and the control goes back to the clearing sequence counter to 0. So by this way we can use this statement. And the beginning of the next instruction cycle has the condition RT0 and the content of program counter is equals to 1. And then control then goes through the instruction cycle and fetches and executes the B1 instruction in the location 1 and so on. Okay. Uh, location 1 and so on. So this way we can use this interrupt cycle. Next, we will see the complete computer description by using this interrupt and your normal execution. Both of these things are in. Okay. Here, we have included this extra flip flop that is R flip flop. Uh, at starting, your sequence counter is 0, IN flag is 0, and R is 0. And then your instruction will check for the R flag. If it is 0, then your normal instruction execution is there. If it is 1, then you have to execute this interrupt cycle. Here, this diagram is similar to your instruction cycle, just differences of this R flag. If it is 0, then your normal instruction cycle is, this is your normal instruction cycle that we have already learned. But for this, your condition will be R dash T0, R dash T1, R dash T2 and so on. There we have used only condition T0, T1, T2. But here this condition will be R dash T0, R dash T1, R dash T2. Here also R dash is included. Okay. If it is 1, then you have to uh, go for the interrupt cycle. And for that, that you have R T0. For R T0, you have to store 0 into address register and program counter into temporary register. For R T1, you have to store this temporary register at the uh, memory location given by the AR, that is 0th location and program counter with 0. At T2 timing signal, increment the program counter by 1, clear IE and, and R to 0 and sequence counter to 0. That we have lastly seen that these three things are the similar to that three things, but your condition is R to 0, R to 1 and R to 2. For your interrupt cycle execution and for your normal cycle execution, R bit is 0 and all of the tasks are similar. Okay. So this is our complete computer description where how we can use with this interrupt cycles okay so uh, we are ending our today's session over here if you have any query then you can contact me